Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London and today I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Wildy Simmons and Hill Publishing. Now Wildies are a bookshop but they also have a publishing arm and they commission um, really first class books for practitioners and for unrepresented parties and I'm indebted to them for the assistance they give us. Uh, as practitioners and of course for the advice they give to those people who cannot afford to um, in, uh, hire lawyers and therefore um, are litigants in person and, and act as unrepresented people in court. A very difficult task and of course a massive problem at the moment for the legal system because so many people can't afford costs and therefore have to do it themselves. It quadruples the amount of time in court and of course that's all part and parcel of some of the major problems we are facing in the 2020s. Um, the book I'm reviewing today is this book here. It's called War Pensions and Armed Forces Compensation. It's now in a second edition and it's been published, uh, written by Andrew Bano, as I say, published by Wildy Simmons and Hill Publishing. I've given the title, it's a new edition of course, I've given the title a welcome updated edition to the Armed Forces Compensation Scheme for the 2020s. And um, what I'm basically saying here is that it, it's a very specialised area, um, but it's an authoritative work in its own way. Let's have a look at it. Um, it's not an area many people would be involved in. There's a very smart back. There we go. There's the spine. There's nothing on the back. You can see the spine there. Let's go to the back of the book. It's a nice book, um, 370 pages. It's the index at the back is by page numbering and you should be able to find what you're looking for quite quickly um, when you go through the um, book. References are to page numbers and then there are some abbreviations which are used. But you should be able to find what you're looking for from the index. Then at the back there are various appendices, three of them in, in total. At the front we've got uh, that um, front page there. Uh, as you can see, Andrew Bano is a retired judge of the Upper Tribunal, formerly president of the War Pensions and Armed Forces Compensation Chamber of the First Tier Tribunal. So he's got a very uh, substantial pedigree. Uh, and again, if you see the long words, lots of words here about the types of, of tribunal or adjudication methods used. There's the um, basic blurb there, and then there's a nice um, dedication, which I shall leave you to read there. We only review books we like. I don't believe in reviewing a book I don't like, uh, because it's no point in doing so, in my view, um, because a lot of work goes into the, these books. There is the main content section. There's a preface, which we'll get to in a minute. You see the contents? So I sort of hold them up. They're split into various parts, the book. Um, there we go, one part two at the moment then we get to part three you can see quite a lot of stuff there and then right at the end there are 33 chapters then three appendices at the back and of course appeals as as is usual appeals will come right at the back then the preface to the second edition is well worth reading uh, it sets out um, what has happened since the first edition came out and obviously Andrew has um, set out um, his um, comments in June last year. I'm recording this in the spring of 2022 and he says I've endeavoured to state the law as at June 2021 and then there's an amendment, uh, an addendum for the Armed Forces Bill 2021 which I imagine has now come um, has been given all the assent. I'm not up to date with that, but I imagine it has. That would that will lead to some changes. And he says that um, when they were preparing the book for publication, the bill was proceeding through Parliament. So presumably now it has been given all the assent, and there will be some changes. Then you've got the preface to the first edition, um, which was 2016. Then you've got the table of court and nominated judges' decisions. It's a slightly different way of of registering some of the um, case law. There's not much of it. Then there are a table of commission, commissioners and upper tribunal decisions. Again, then you've got after that, a very small amount of statutes, small number of statutory instruments as well. Uh, having said that, there are rather more than I have thought initially. Then you've got some conventions, which you've got there. You've also got, I think, 
um, yes, some practice statements as well. Because it's a very specialised area. The table of warrants and orders in council, so you scan this is all delegated legislation here. Then other materials, so it builds up quite quickly. Um, and then what you've got after that is a citation of cases and how the cases are actually cited in this particular book. I mean, he says, for instance, some of the many war pensions cases which were decided by nominated High Court judges uh, were reported in index loose leaf reports. So you're not getting them in the main, the main run of, of case law. Then you get the various parts. Part one starts with war pensions. And then you see you've got paragraph numbering and you've got some footnoting. And that's, that's the way it runs all the way through with the various different parts. And you can see just going in the middle, you've got the paragraph numbering in the middle. Again, you can see a little bit, not too much footnoting. I hasten to add, you can see, because it's all the detail referencing. Um, all in all, I think it's a very important book. And the, as I say, the appendices, which are at the back, um, let me just get to this after the appeal. They start there and they are looking specifically at um, some of the various orders. So we are talking here not about main statute uh, law, but the delegated legislation that goes with it. So what do I say in short terms about the book itself? Well, I welcome it from Wilder. I'm very grateful to them producing it because this authoritative work has been written by a former president of the um, Compensation Chamber of the First Tier Tribunal. And it takes account of legal cases and developments since the publication of the first edition, which was in about 2016. Now, uh, it's a comprehensive reference work in this very narrow area of, of work, covering all aspects of war pensions and armed forces compensation, law and practice. And I think it's extremely useful to have this. War hasn't gone away. And as I am reviewing this, although we're not involved directly at the moment, I hope we won't in the future, but we do have uh, the Soviet, or rather the Russian aggression, uh, and the war they declared on Ukraine, which is still ongoing as I re record this. And clearly at the moment we have not been dragged into that conflict. But I mean, there's a very big danger that probably things could change, but let's hope not. Obviously there have been matters involving the um, armed forces in the United Kingdom, uh, which are directly relevant to this um, book. Because what Mr. Bano is trying to provide is a thorough explanation of the working and the provisions of the Service Pensions Order 2006, and then of the Armed Forces Compensation Scheme of 2011. Now that has been interpreted by the what are called the nominated judges and the judges of the upper tribunal and the appellate courts in really looking at how the delegated legislation is working, if I can put it in its simplest form. And the book covers the procedure for making a claim, um, bringing an appeal and the practice and procedure before the first tier tribunal. That's for England and Wales and what is called in the, the Pension Appeal Tribunals for Scotland and Northern Ireland, together with guidance on bringing appeals in the upper chamber, uh, or rather the upper tribunal. Now, as you can see, these words for many people will not have too much meaning because we're using the word tribunal, not court. But of course, they basically have the same sort of uh, end result of, of, of making decisions where there are disputes. So the book is designed to be a practical and easily understood guide for all those who are concerned in having to bring or having to deal with war pensions and armed forces compensation claims and their appeals where appropriate. And the book also provides, I think for the first time in nearly a hundred years of history of war pensions, um, appeals in a comprehensive analysis of the legal principles which are underlying entitlement to compensation for those injured or killed in the service of their country. And I think that's a tremendous step forward. Uh, I say that as an ex-member of the armed forces myself. Um, I think that's an important step forward um, because in the past, certainly quite a long time ago now, uh, things were really rather different. And I'm glad to see that, that, that um, this is taking place. The book, I think, will also be of, of 
interest and fascination to all those who are um, wanting to see the development of our older system of welfare benefits develop and how the special position of the armed forces is reflected in the injury compensation schemes because they really are uh, and, and can be very um, difficult areas for many people because um, in the past there really wasn't a great deal of, of help if one goes back into history and thinks about the way things were done even um, round before and then during the Second World War um, and remember that is before we know where we are it'll be 100 years ago since the Second World War started so things are looking we're looking at things in a very different way now um, in addition to that there's a lovely quote from the um, a review of this book in the Law Society Gazette which I think is worth thinking about it says this is an excellent publication and it should be close at hand for any practitioner advising personnel in person injury employment and occupational claims and that actually sums up neatly what it's about now uh, Mr Bano's publication the date of it for the new second-hand hardback edition is the 31st of January 2022. As I say, the problems we've got is that there will be some changes taking place, but this is delegated legislation primarily, so therefore uh, one has to keep an eye on the, the, what, what is actually happening within the delegated legislation. Let's just have a look at the um, book again. Um, reduction and cancellation of awards. So you see they, they cover a whole range of, of areas of controversy, but you can see here this is chapter 11, paragraph numbering and the footnotes. And if you run the three rights of appeal, chapter 25, again, the same sort of structure. You do have at the back of it uh, these various appendices. That's This is the appendix three. This is the schedule to the... Um, Armed Forces and Reserve Forces on Compensation Scheme Order 2011. Um, it sets out a lot of detail here, which you may well be interested in looking for, depending on what your particular requirement is. Then, as I say, a lot of detail, and then uh, a relatively small index at the back. Thank you very much, Wildy, for doing, uh, producing this, commissioning it and producing it. It's a first-class book and a very important book for anybody involved in this area and I commend it to you all. Thank you. Bye-bye.